And I'll call the order of the business of September 22nd, 2015. <coughs> Madam Deputy Kirk, will you please take the roll? Ned Apigian. Present. Kenneth Barron. Here. Thomas Berry. Here. Robert Constant. Here. Lisa Hicks Clayton. Absent. Margaret Horvath. Absent. Joseph Kaczynski. Here. Mr. Chairman, do you have a quorum? Thank you. At this time, I'd like to ask uh, Angela Keller, our videographer, to please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Angela. Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. The next order of business is the approval of the agenda. Mr. Chairman. Councilman Kaczynski. Move the uh, council approve the agenda for the uh, meeting of September 22nd, 2015 as submitted. Support. Second by Councilman Constant. <coughs> Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion, aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Item number four. Approval of the minutes, 4A, the minutes of the regular meeting of September 8th, 2015. Mr. Chairman. Councilman Constant. I move that the minutes from the September 8th, 2015 meeting of the Dearborn Heights City Council as set forth in agenda item 4A be approved. Second. Second, Second by Councilman Apigian. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion, aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Item number six, fund transfers and current claims. Mr. Mr. Chair. Councilman Berry. Motion to approve current claims 6-1 through 634. Second. Second by Councilman Kaczynski. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion, aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Number nine, reports from city officials, 9A from the Fire Chief Program, Federal AFG General Grant. Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair. Councilman DePigian. Uh, I move to approve of Chief Fire Chief Brogan's request to accept AFG regional grant outlined in item 9A. This is a request to accept federal AFG regional grant for a total amount of $674,750. This grant is to be purchased for, is for the purchase of radio com equipment for nine, uh, nine other communities. Dearborn Heights share is 198,500. We have a 10% match, which is 19,850 that come out of our capital outlay fund. Second. Second by Councilman Kaczynski. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the, mo I mean, all in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. 9B from Public Service Administrator Zimmer, the 2015-16 My Deal Road Salt Contract Change Order Number Six. Mr. Chair, Councilman Berry, motion to approve the change notice number six um, by Director Bill Zimmer, as outlined in 9B. Second. Second by Councilman Kaczynski. Is there any discussion? Hearing none. All in favor of the motion, aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carried. 9C from Assessor's Office, Prebolski, Millage for the Downriver Disposal System Bonds. Mr. Chairman. Councilman Apigian. I move to approve of Justin Prebolski's request for the Millage for the Downriver Disposal System Bonds for the Millage requested of 1.6662 mills that the taxes collected in excess of that specific judgment payment can be used to reduce future payments as outlined in 9C. Second. Support. Second by Councilman Kaczynski. Is there any discussion? Mr. Chair. Councilman Berry. I'd like to ask the treasurer quickly. I think we talked about this, Mr. Riley, and we are actually down. It is still down the last year. Down 1. from 1.8 something. something to 1.66 now. Thank you. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion, aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. 
9D from Assessor's Office, Probolski, lot split of 6905 Gully. Mr. Chairman. Councilman Pegan. I move uh, to accept the, rec the, the, rec the recommendation of Justin Probolski's recommendation that we approve a, lo a lot split uh, outlined in item 9D uh, as indicated in detail. Second. Second by Councilman Kaczynski. Is there any discussion? Mr. Chair. Councilman Berry. You know, I didn't, I, I, I tried to make sense of the survey form that was submitted by the Callahan Group. Um, Justin is not in today, is he? It looks, no. it looks like there are three 40-foot lots that they- Are they combining two of them? Combined them into yeah. two. Okay. So they they gave 20 to one, 20 to the other, and which is not a bad way to do no, things. No, I agree. Yeah. I agree. Thank you. That answers my question. I don't think Appreciate they should it. be any bigger than that in the neighborhood of 40-foot lots, but that's what they're doing. Councilman Kaczynski, yeah. did you have a question? The, uh, essentially, uh, there were three 40-foot lots uh, reconfigured to two 60-foot lots. Right. And... Uh, I find it interesting that the subdivision is, go is called Golf Dale Quarter Acre Subdivision. Uh, lots essentially on my street, which is in the same subdivision, are 66 frontage and with only one 80 foot lot. And this is reasonable to, uh, to move forward with the two 60 foot lots. They're buildable now and they weren't before. Well, they're buildable at 40 feet too, but well, this is a way to, to handle 40 foot lots as people want to combine them not make them to 80 foot lots in a neighborhood with 40 foot lots but it's a great solution okay any further discussion hearing none all in favor of the motion aye aye, aye. opposed motion carried 9e from police chief Gan gavin annual condenser cleaning payment mr chair councilman barry motion to approve the payment to sis corp uh, mm -hmm. as outlined in 9e Support. Second by Councilman Constant. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion, aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. 9F from Any Community minutes. and Economic Development Director Amon, CDBG for the year 2014 ADA Berwyn Restroom Project Payment. Mr. Chairman. Councilman uh, Pegan. I move to approve of CDBG Director Ron Amon's uh, suggestion that I mean request that the 2014 ADA Berwyn restroom project invoice with his, uh, concurring with his recommendation to approve of the payment of the attached invoice in the amount uh, not indicated here in the letter in his uh, but indicated for the entire Berwyn restroom project as submitted details in 9F. Support. Mr. Chair. Second by Councilman uh, Constant. The amount is on the next yeah, second page. 16,775,000. Yeah, I didn't want to look for it fast, right? 16,775. <clears throat> 16,000. Okay. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion, aye. 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 Opposed? Matthew. Motion carried. 9G from Emergency Management Director MCRAP, Fall Winter 2015-16, Dearborn Heights Today Newsletter. Mr. Mr. Chairman. Chairman. Councilman Kaczynski. Move council concur with the uh, Emergency Manager Robert Tancrap and uh, conform to his requirements with regard to the uh, Fall and Winter 2015-2016, Dearborn Heights uh, Today's Newsletter. The uh, gross amount of this consideration is seven thousand nine hundred dollars, all according to item nine G. Second, second by Councilman Apigian. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion, aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carried. Nine eight from Treasurer Riley engagement letter from Miller Canfield Paddock and Stone PLC regarding the City of Dearborn Heights 2015. Refunding bonds. This is a received note and file. Mr. Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair. Councilman Barry. Move we receive note and file the engagement letter from Miller Canfield Paddock and Stone as outlined in 9H. Second. Mm -hmm. Second by Councilman Kaczynski. 
Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion, aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Item number 11, ordinance and resolutions, 11A, for Miller, Canfield, Paddock, and Stone, PLC, <coughs> resolution authorizing in issuance of 2015 refunding bonds, limited tax, general obligation. Mr. Chair. Councilman Berry. Motion to approve the resolution authorizing the insurance of the insurance insuance of the 2015 refunding bonds as outlined in 11A. Second. Second by Councilman Apigian. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion, aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. And number 13, new business, 13A business <coughs> license renewal for Fetzers on the Beach, 5127 South Beach Daily. Mr. Chair. Chair. Councilman Epigian. Uh, I, I move to <coughs> approve of the business license of the Fetzers on the Beach, located at 5127 South Beach Daily, as indicated on 13A. Second. Second by Councilman Kaczynski. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion, aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. This ends our regular portion uh, of business. Is there anything to come from any of the council members? Yes. Councilman Pegan. Um, unfortunately, about a month ago, I made an announcement that I wanted to hold a pri not a private meeting, a public <coughs> meeting on issues pertaining to trees and other sundry things. And unfortunately, two weeks ago at our regular meeting, I was absent out of the town and I couldn't accelerate that meeting. So I'm announcing today that the meeting that I suggested that all of you could attend will be held on a Saturday at the Carolyn Kennedy Library between um, 3 and 5. Yes, 2 and 5, I'm sorry, 3 hours. The library closes at 5. We're doing it on Saturday afternoon. Senior citizens don't like to go out in the evening. And this allows people that are regularly employed because it's a weekend to come out as well. So uh, I've developed quite a list of over 100 people that I'm aware of. Of course, a lot of people say they'll come and 50% may show up. But there are other people collecting names and several of the homeowners groups are getting uh, email blasts to show up and um, all of you are welcome if you have any questions you can call me on my cell phone area code 313-585-6500 hopefully we'll have an interesting conversation and everybody will decide it's important to save our trees no the a third I'm sorry October 3rd Gives us a little time to get everybody to call people, and thank you very much. Okay. Anything else from any council Mr. members? Mr. Chairman. Uh, Councilman Kaczynski. Councilman Kaczynski, repeat that uh, date and time. Uh, Saturday, October the 3rd, uh, 3 to 5. So two, to two to 5, you said. 2 to 5. 2 to 5. I'm three sorry. Hours. 3 okay. hours, right. The gives you plenty of time if you're late to still have something to say. <laughs> Thank you very much. October 3rd, <coughs> 2 to 5. I don't want to be late to my own okay. game. Okay. Uh, indicate the subject matter that uh, is going to be dialogued. Uh, the issue of preserving our trees, tree ordinance, we could talk about a couple of other ordinances that are relatively simple. The fences, we we had a problem at our last meeting about definition of fence issues. But uh, the important thing is it takes two and three lifetimes to grow a tree. And if any of you that don't realize how important that is to your property values, go to Brightmore which is a disaster in Detroit, six mile in Telegraph, just drive in, beautiful forested area. In spite of the fact every other house is burnt out, every other house is a vacant lot, every other house is not occupied, the place is a war zone. It's beautiful because of those gigantic trees. They're the things that make your property valuable. And if you don't learn to preserve them, and property owners have rights, we'll talk about all that. I'm sure there'll be our ideas, but 
That's what makes this the tree city. <laughs> Hopefully. Yes, um, please. I don't know okay. If I can say this, but um, I would like to bring up the fact that there is a lot of trash being thrown out everywhere. She's going to give her son her time. Yeah. It's littered. It's, it's that would be a, a separate time, too. This is just something that Councilman yeah. Pegan is, yeah. is You'll is have an doing opportunity to get up and speak. I don't usually make a lot of announcements. Okay. And nothing more from the council. Mayor, did you have a uh, Just for informational purposes, we've had difficulty uh, finding a uh, new assessor. I did apply for, uh, and we've received the waiver that if worse comes to shove, Justin is uh, recognized by the state of Michigan to sign our role. He's far enough in the process. So to guarantee that there's somebody there to sign the role, we have now done that. Oh. So uh, we'll keep the council informed, but I think that was an important step because of you've all. Oh yes. Yep. Know how difficult this has become. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Chair. Councilman Constan. Uh, and our season for the Dearborn Knights Goodfellows is approaching. We had a meeting yesterday in which uh, Councilwoman Marge Horvath, who's participated year after year, participated by phone. Our paper sales this year will be December 5th. And then as we did for the first time last year, uh, those who are gonna be the recipients of aid will pick up their uh, packages for uh, Christmas at the Berwyn Senior Citizen Center on December the 12th. So uh, the uh, request for ads has been mailed out. So if anybody's interested in running an ad in our Goodfellow paper, uh, they can get a hold of myself or uh, any of the good fellow officers, and we hope we have another great year this year. Good. Any announcements? Okay, John. Um, on Saturday, December 12th, uh, Wayne County is hosting a household hazardous waste day. Um, this is a great opportunity to give get rid of some of those items that are in your garage that you don't want to put in your regular trash because they're not good for the environment. Um, it's Saturday, October 10th from 8 until 2, and this particular one is at the Wayne County Community College District Downriver Campus, which is on North Line Road, 21,000 North Line Road in Taylor. And so it's not far from many of our residents um, to participate, anybody in Wayne County can. They take fertilizers, chemical, pesticides, uh, motor oil, propane tanks, fire extinguishers, smoke detectors, mercury thermometers, fluorescent bulbs, which also have mercury in them. And an, another important item is um, computer monitors, um, tele old televisions, uh, fax machines and electronics. So, so they also do ele mm -hmm. electronic recycling there. So it's a great opportunity to get rid of things that you don't know what to do with because if you put a television out at the street, they're not going to pick it up. So this is a f place where you can get rid of it for free as long as you're a resident of Wayne County. So again, um, it's Saturday, October 10th, and they have a phone number on the flyer. It's 734-326-3936 if you have any questions. Okay, thank you. Thanks, John. Chief? Just a short announcement. Uh, the end of July this year, we lost one of our police reserves, Eldo Gabriel. Eldo was a police reserve for over 25 years in the city. Um, he ser served the city on the planning commission. He was also a good fellow. Um, a lot of the elections, he would volunteer to help out, do security. So um, Eldo passed away and uh, his family still resides in the city. And then one other sad announcement is the police department retired one of our canine dogs last Friday, Ozzy. He was the biggest dog. Um, he had some health issues and large heart, so he's been taken out of service as of last Friday. So we're down to just one canine. Thank you. He, um, he, he was, we recently obtained him, didn't we? What was it? No, they're both about Same time. seven years old. Oh, has it been seven yep, years been already? been seven years. Yeah. My God. Do, do we have plans of replacing him or? We're gonna look at that down the line, okay. probably the first of the year. We still have one in, in uh, service, and we're gonna look at another. Chief, would you re please repeat the name of the first person you mentioned, Aldo? Gabrielli. Gabrielli, thank you. Great, great guy, got sick and died suddenly, yep. left a family, just a great uh, resident of Dearborn Heights. Well involved in the city. Okay. 
Uh, announcements? Hello, Council Chair and Mayor. Just wanted to talk about a few upcoming programs. Uh, next Tuesday, September 29th at 7 p.m. at Carroll and Candy Library, Dave Serio of the Arab American Museum will, will be doing a lecture on Arab American immigration. Uh, he will be focusing on three major waves of immigration since the 1880s uh, and give an overview of the vital contributions immigrants have provided us all since. Um, so that should be a fascinating program. Uh, next Wednesday, September 30th at 7 p.m. at Carolyn Ketty Library. Join us as we do an introduction to social networking. Uh, are you curious about social networking but haven't tried it out yet? No. Do you want to know what all the fuss is about? Join Holly Hibner as she talks about Facebook, Twitter, SlideShare, LinkedIn, YouTube, Yelp, Flickr, and more. Uh, although not required, please register at the CERC desk or call 313-791-3800. Uh, but that's not all. Join October 6th, or Tuesday, October 6th at JFK Library at 6.30 p.m. and Tuesday, October 13th at Carolyn Kennedy Library at 7 p.m. Join the Animal Capers gang as they try and solve the hound of the basket cases. Sherlock Bones, the great detective, must figure out what's behind the spooky occurrences in the haunted swamp. Mr. Jim will also be working with Ranger Bob and Basil the Bear to uncover the machinations behind this insidious plot. So come on out, Halloween treats will be provided. That's all for now. Thank you for your time and see you at the library. He's always so entertaining. Thanks, Mike. Yeah. He's good. Any more announcements, things happening in the city? Things going on? Okay. Then at this time, if anyone would like to speak, please come up to the podium, give your name, street, and the city you live in. You will have three minutes. Councilman Barry will keep track. When you have 15 seconds left, he will hold up this sign. And when your three minutes are up, he will hold up the stop sign, and we will stick to the three-minute plan. So if anyone at this point, please come up to the microphone. Jacqueline Turner from McDonald Street. I just have a question for the Chief of Police. When you retired the dog, where did he go? He became property of the handler, Officer Ross. Okay. Um, once the dog's retired, after five years of being in service, it goes back to the dog handler. So oh. he's taking care of him now. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Hi, my name is Mark Fitzgerald, uh, 26616 Brian Court. <clears throat> uh, I wanted to talk to you about the condition of the concrete on our street, our court. And I talked to Mr. Barron about this back in the spring. And I guess he talked to Mr. Zimmer. And Mr. Barron came out and looked at it, agreed with me how bad it is. We were told at that time that it was put in the budget, they were going to replace the cement. The contractor actually came out a couple of days later and measured. I talked to him. He said, we're hoping to be on your street by the beginning of July. That's the last we've heard of anything. In the meantime, the street's getting worse. It's been swept twice this year. The last time was about two weeks ago. But now there's re rods sticking out of the cement, sticking straight up in a few spots, and people are going to start getting flat tires. And they did send a coal patch crew out, which they told me we're wasting our time. You can't throw a coal patch on top of loose gravel. It doesn't stick. And they didn't fill in the holes where the re-rod was sticking out. So I'm trying to find out, are they going to replace this cement? Okay. Mark, do okay. you have an answer, Bill, then? Yeah, it is, it is in bad shape. Uh, we did actually go over and look at it. Uh, I thought maybe the supervisor had already communicated to him. Uh, it is on the list. We had a couple of dangerous uh, catch basins that we had to take care of first. Uh, but I expect within another week we are going to be over there and, and that whole uh, cul-de-sac will be replaced. Okay, well, thank you very much. Okay, thanks. Anyone else? Hello. Good evening, everybody. Zahir Abdelha, 354 Rosemary. Just have a question for the human resource director, if possible. Pardon? Have a question for the human resource director. 
What, what's the question you hear that you have? Question: The city posted two jobs recently, one for firefighter, and one I believe for a clerk at the commu uh, economic development uh, department. The qualifications for the firefighter degree and all kind of conditions and qualifications at believe thirty six thousand eight hundred dollars a year. A person who put his life at risk gets thirty six eight. And person who the qualification is only not to be not a republic and little knowledge about how to read things and how to assess contracts, and no degree and no other qualification at 39,900. I would like to know from her how they assess and decide how much that job is cost. I actually believe that that's a progressive step for when a new firefighter comes in until it gets up to the 60,000 the, the starting wage and, and I so believe the works. same thing goes for the other job too uh, no. not necessarily no this is contractual as it steps up so it, no qualification for that person uh, nothing except the stamp 75 dollars not a <coughs> republic who put these conditions and how many people applied for the job if I may know uh, if you want to, you want to see Liz. Do you want to answer that, Liz? Or I mean, not the time of yeah. How many people applied for the job? Really, now is not the time. Okay. How many firefighters applied for the job? A firefighter. And how many? Who applied for the rehab specialist? Okay. And if I could just comment in on the salary, the yes, salary please. was something that was proposed by the Community and Economic Development Director. It was proposed um, to city council. That was what the salary was set at. And then with regards to the firefighter position, that salary was set forth by the collective bargaining to Councilman um, Barron's point. It is a progressive, so our firefighters do go up on an annual basis. Um, it just seemed to me very odd that we don't ask for a qualification for a person who's going to receive $40,000 a year except to have a notary public stamp, $75, anybody can get it. That's my question. I think we should look for a lot better qualification at $40,000 a year, even if it is going set for 10 years you know, down the road. Not 36,800 for somebody who's going to put his life for us on the line sometimes. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Mr. Chairman, Troy Brown, 23420 Hanover Street, Dillman Heights. Uh, I want to take care of some uh, uh, items from last week. One of them, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to ask uh, someone sitting at the table, uh, the mayor. He mentioned that uh, Business 101 was to take over captured taxes and invest them because we were talking about overcaptured taxes in the CSO bond, remember, recall? So he said that it was business 101 to invest them. I've been asking for months what those numbers are. I've been asking for those numbers all the way back to 2011. So in the business 101, I would think reporting is business 102. So can I have, can we ask the mayor and the administration tonight, can you give me how much we made from 2011 until 2014 when we were uh, over, overtaxed, and, and how much interest did we make on that money? Well, I don't believe we could do that now, but uh, we m might be able to have those numbers next week when we discuss some of them. Okay, and then why aren't they, if they're an investment, why aren't they in the treasurer's investment report? If that's an investment. Now, you can't have it both ways. It's either in or fund no, borrowing or it's an investment. If the investor has them together, he may have multiple ones together. I don't know. Okay. That's so it's a CSO bond is all by itself in the investment report, and it says nothing about interests that it gained from loaning it from other, other uh, loaning money to another fund. Okay. So my, my next question is uh, to Councilman Kaczynski, and um, I have, uh, I, I've got to uh, ask him a question 
uh, straight up. And I just wanted to know, Councilman, did you know that in 2012 and 2013 and in 2014, when you voted yes to tax, to set the levy at 1.25 mills for the CSO bond, that that was in direct violation of MCL 141-2701, item four. Did you know that? Mr. Chairman, I, think, I have no answer, have to answer this. To that. Okay. This, okay. This, and, appears to be another, the, uh, this appears to be another question that Troy Brown asked that we don't have answers immediately, which really makes this body look as if we don't know anything. This man has been campaigning since the flood of August 2011, and it's time that he gets stopped in that strategy because he is... It, it's time that I have some answers. Excuse me, Councilman Kaczynski. Stop. Excuse me, Councilman Kaczynski has a floor. The, uh, his strategy is to uh, discredit everybody who sits up here who doesn't have an answer for him today. And if you, if you go back to one of his uh, emails that he sent everybody, this man is a one issue campaigner. And that one issue is for his benefit only. He wrote in a email, item number three, my only concern regarding this fund is if there is leftover surplus after paying the intended debt can such surplus be used for somehow to a new to develop a new bond or some other financial tool that will help my family out without waiting for my money from any other government entity my family continues to suffer in fear of any rain and our lives on hold and our lives are on hold uh, relating to our home his opening statement is my only concern he doesn't have any concern of the 14 other people on hanover who have suffered like everybody else in the flood that's plane. not that's not right mr chair chairman Chairman, I, I have to. Councilman Kaczynski that, has the floor. That's the strategy he's using, trying to discredit this body because we don't give him an immediate answer, making us appear as if we don't have answers. Mm -hmm. That's the strategy that this mm -hmm. man is using, and he has continually campaigned at this podium, which is against policy of this council. No. So, I promised. That's, that's, okay, that's, Mr. That's what he's Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, you have to go back to the context and the date that I wrote that. That was somewhere in April. Since April, we have the July 8th email from the mayor telling me that these funds were invested, disclosing to the city from Miller Canfield that we were overtaxed. Everything changes with that. Now, I asked the councilman, did he know that, that I asked him a question? Did he know that he was in violation? I didn't say anything about anybody else at this table. I asked him, did he know he was in violation? It's a yes or no answer. That's it. Mr. Chairman, Councilman. the council body acts as a body. Not you voted individually, Councilman. Not, not you voted not. individually. You voted individually. I have, I have the floor. Mr. Brown, okay. then you got it. You got to put it in the right context. You, you're not going to misquote. Kaczynski has a floor. Go ahead. You're, you're continuing to do what you've been doing for the last 13 months. You're campaigning on one issue, and that one issue is self-serving. I promised I would be at this podium until I got answers, and I'm not getting any answers, Detroit, Mr. Your, Councilman. Your, your three minutes is up. Three minutes. Yeah. And we have our meeting next week. Okay. Anyone yeah, but else? they were taken up by him, misquoting oh, me. No, no, it, they were it, taken it, up by not. him, misquoting me. Mr. Chairman, no, stop. I, I stop it when you stop talking. So I made sure you get your three minutes. And I didn't get my an question answered, Mr. Chairman. Anyone else? Okay. 
Suzanne Todd, Academy Street. First, I'd like to give credit to the DPW, to in particular Leonard, who came out to look at my uh, favored maple tree out front of my house, which is on city property, but I, I value the tree. And I think I want you to know, Mr. Zimmer, that he is a good representative and uh, an ambassador for the city of Dearborn Heights. You can be very proud of him. Now, Mr. Kosinski, you order. said that, wait a second, I have the floor. Point of order. We're not gonna have any, if you start making accusations. I'm gonna just, I, I have the right to rebuttal. If he can, I can. Point Why can't order. we talk? Why can't we Call, rebuttal? Point of order, order. Councilman Kosinski. Whenever I sit here, the appropriate title I carry is Councilman Kosinski. Not Joe Kosinski or anything like your. I you're, said Mr. Kosinski. But you said Mr. Kosinski. Prefix that by Councilman Joseph Kosinski. Okay, and you, sir, will call me Suzanne Todd RN, because that is my official title. How dare you, sir, accuse him of championing his cause? This cause has been going on for 50 years. 50 years, sir, that people's houses have been flooded with poop with used condoms, with blood, with rodent bodies, and four feet of water in their living spaces. And you sit there and say he's only champ, champ, <coughs> champagning for himself, campaigning for himself. You have me so angry. And then I gotta sit there and listen to Councilman Apegian talk about trees. I love trees. I take care of my trees, even the city trees. But you know what? It's more important. You have no idea what's going on in the South End. And you arrogant people that sit up there and, and, and require that we have to have some kind of credentials to talk to you, that's wrong. Wrong. Who do you think you are? You work for us, the taxpayers. That's right. Absolutely. That's right. Okay. Anyone else wish to speak? Motion. While we always welcome the concerns and comments of our citizens, their views and opinions are not necessarily the views and opinions of the council and the administration. Oh, I did not see your hand up or come. Right. Go ahead. Um, Heidi Brown, 23420 Hanover, uh, Troy's wife. I just want to say that uh, we do not forget what happened to us and to the 14 other homes on our block. As you know, I took care of some of the neighbors. We were out there helping them. So we do, we do have concern for them. And we love them as, and we love our neighborhood. So we did have concern for them. And you know, I just wanna say that all we're looking for is answers. And we feel deeply for these people that get up here and ask, you know, back in July, they were asking for help and they didn't get it. And I just, you know, I can't understand why they have to keep asking. And so I'm just wondering, when we have our meeting on September 29th and my husband has been asking all these questions, is he going to have to ask the question again and then we have to wait again for answers? Or since he's been asking the questions for so long, are we going to get answers on that evening? If we can get them answered, we'll answer them. Okay, I just read my closing statement, I'll do it again. While we always welcome the concerns and comments of our citizens, their views and opinions are not necessarily the views and opinions of the council and the administration. I'll accept a motion to end the meeting. Motion to adjourn. Motion by Councilman Berry. Support. Second by Councilman Constant. All in favor of the motion, aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried.